action takes place in a Russian urban village. Two bank employees are talking during a break, while a quiet unattractive woman named Luba is silently reading a book. Colleagues begin to ridicule her, but she still does not pay attention to them. Suddenly Luba is summoned by her boss. She doesn't like the fact that the staff doesn't like Luba. On the street, Luba walked past Vodik, who is the first handsome man in the village. He was telling his buddies about his victories on the personal front. On the way, Luba met a neighbor Vasily, who asked her to help unload the bags from the car. Vasily asked Luba to be home tonight, because he wants to visit and talk. At home, Antonina told her daughter to put herself in order, because Vasily was coming soon to ask her in marriage. Thinking that it was about her mother, Luba began to congratulate her, but it turned out that the neighbor would come to woo not to Antonina, but to Luba. At dinner, the mother makes a deal with the neighbor, intending to take the cow and piglets in exchange for her only daughter. Luba cannot believe that the own native person would do this to her. She declares that there will be no wedding. Later, the mother begins to reprimand her daughter. According to her Luba is not pretty, in addition she is already 30 years old, so rich neighbor Vasily is the only chance to marry. However, Luba says she will only marry Vodik the cab driver, whom she loves. The mother begins to ridicule her daughter, because Vodik is the most sought-after guy in the village, and he won't even look at someone like Luba. Having come to the market to buy vegetables, Antonina complains to her buddies about her good-for-nothing daughter. Meanwhile, the district officer told Vodik that the whole village is gossiping that he is going to marry Luba. Vodik was outraged. He went to the bank, found Luba, and said that he would only spend the night with such an ugly woman for $20,000. For this scandal, the boss removed Luba from her position as a cashier, making her a cleaner. Now Luba washes the floors in the bank. In the evening she asked her mother why she had blabbed to everyone about her crush on Vodik. The mother feels no guilt, thinking her daughter is ungrateful. Out of desperation, Luba wanted to harm herself, but then changed her mind because the cow went into labor. At night, the mother asked her daughter's forgiveness, but she simply walked away. The next day, Luba withdrew all the money from her account, since her mother had nothing to pay the loan for the TV set. At the bank, Luba waited until the boss's office was empty and took out $20,000 from the safe. When she saw the icon, she changed her mind. However, the colleagues continued to make fun of her. In anger, Luba overturned her chair and went outside in tears. The district police officer came up to her and asked her to come to the station. He wants to talk about Luba's boss, who allegedly spent off more than $20,000 for repairs, although there were no repairs. The boss saw it through the window and then threatened Luba, reminding her that she had to keep quiet. This time Luba without hesitation stole $20,000 and left a note saying that she had taken the money. Luba doesn't want anyone else to be blamed. She got into a cab right away. Vodik tried to chase her away, but Luba asked him to keep his promise. After all he said he would spend the night with her for 20000 Vodik laughed, but when he realized that Luba was serious, he started the car. He asked where she got the money. Luba lied that she had won the lottery. However, when Luba asked him not to drive past police checkpoints, Vodik guessed that the money had been stolen. To avoid looking like a coward, Vodik decided not to turn Luba into the police. He did not expect such a thing from a quiet, unattractive woman. They were pondering where to go. Since childhood, Luba had dreamed of seeing the sea. A long time ago the mother promised to take her there, if she finished school well, but she never kept her promise. The car got stuck in the mud. Luba got out to push it, and fell into a puddle. Thinking that Vodik had abandoned her, Luba cried, but he didn't go anywhere without her. As Luba changed in the car, Vodik realized that she wasn't so ugly. They were staying in a hotel. Vodik was on the phone with his policeman friend and lied that he had gone to visit his cousin for a week. Vodik told Luba that he found out from the investigator that she was wanted. They can't go to the sea, because only one federal highway leads there. So Vodik suggested that Luba go to the village where he grew up. At night Vodik and Luba lay in the same bed, but nothing happened between them. Luba said they would do it another time. In the morning, Vodik smiled as he watched her sleep. In the afternoon they had a bite to eat in an open-air cafe. Luba wondered why Vodik hadn't left her yesterday, because he had his chance. They spent the whole day together, and in the evening they admired the river. Meanwhile, the police are actively looking for Luba. Vodik reads advertisements in the newspapers for rented cottages. They decide to choose the most expensive, because there is nothing to lose anyway. The two-story cottage turned out to be gorgeous indeed. Left alone, Luba and Vodik fooled around. He wanted to kiss her, but she asked him not to rush things. 
In the afternoon, Vodik tried to find the house where he grew up. He remembers almost nothing, because after divorce from her husband, his mother took him away from this village. Vodik thinks about his father, who has never even called him once to wish him a happy birthday. Luba never knew her father at all. He ran away before she was even born. Vodik did find his house, but it was no longer his father who lived there. The man told that the former owner of the house had lived alone for 20 years and eventually drank himself. He passed away some time ago. Vodik got drunk with grief. He could not walk on his own, so Luba brought him to their cottage. Sitting on the porch, Vodik began to cry. He wanted to be alone and asked Luba to leave him alone. Later, he being in an inadequate state, tried to break into Luba's room, but she locked herself in, frightened. Vodik started acting aggressively, demanding that the door be opened, but she still did not do it. In the morning Luba made him breakfast and left, promising to return soon. She decided to go shopping. In the meantime, Vodik took the money. After shopping, Luba went into a beauty salon and had her hair and makeup done, just like for a wedding night. After applying makeup, Luba looked like a real beauty. Men on the street immediately began to pay attention to her. There was no Vodik at the cottage, nor was there any money. At first Luba thought that he had decided to leave her after all, but soon Vodik returned with wine and flowers. He apologized for his drunken antics last night. Vodik also reminded her not to leave the money unattended. Luba had never been given flowers before. Finally she and Vodik kissed, and passion arose between them. For Luba, it was her first experience. When it was all over, Vodik thanked Luba for not being like everyone else. He confessed his love for her. Vodik had never said such words to any girl before. At night, Luba dreamt that she and Vodik were married and had a baby. Beloved cooked her breakfast in bed. It seems that nothing else is needed to be happy. As they strolled through the city, they wondered what to do next. It's been a month, hiding in the cottage won't work forever. Vodik suggests go to Siberia. When some hooligan made an indecent compliment to Luba, Vodik got into a fight. Soon the police intervene. All the participants of the conflict were taken to the police station. Luba's face seemed familiar to the policeman, but he could not remember where he had seen her. Since the guys decided to settle the issue among themselves peacefully, they were released. On the street, Luba felt sick and dizzy. The hooligans asked Vodik for forgiveness, saying they were wrong. In the meantime, the policeman saw a photo of Luba, who was wanted. Luba went to the drugstore to buy a pregnancy test, but a policeman stopped her on the street. He demanded $10,000 in exchange for his silence. Luba had no choice but to agree. The policeman drove her to the cottage. Luba promised that the money would be there tomorrow. Vodik prepares a romantic dinner. He began to suspect that something was going on with his beloved, but she assured him that everything was fine. The pregnancy test showed a positive result. Luba was happy and scared at the same time. In the evening, Luba looked like a beauty queen. The lovers were unaware that the policeman was watching them through the window. He was very surprised at the insolence and fearlessness of the fugitive criminal. In the morning hugging Vodka asleep, Luba cries, realizing that their happiness will not last. Calling a cab, Luba decided on a desperate move. Before leaving, she left a note for Vodik. When the policeman saw Luba getting into a cab, he realized that she was not going to give him the money. Luba decided to surrender to the police voluntarily because she was tired of hiding. In the morning, Vodik found the note. Luba left the money and said she was letting him go. She lied to the police that Vodik knew nothing about the bank robbery. She allegedly managed to spend all the money. However, the police officer said that in the statement Luba's boss wrote that it was not $20,000 that was stolen, but $100. Vodik returned to the village. He met with the friend from the police, who told him that there would be two days before the trial. Vodik wants only one thing, to save his beloved. Luba is saddened that Vodik did not show up for the trial. When the judge left to consider the verdict, Antonina told her daughter that no one wanted her except her own mother. Luba believes that everything in her life is going wrong because she was born without love. Meanwhile, Vodik gave the money to the friend who had to negotiate with the judge. It was time for the verdict. Luba saw Vodik in the courtroom, and she felt better. Luba was given a year and a half in jail instead of the five years she was supposed to serve. Some time passed. Vodik arrived at the prison to meet his beloved, who had been released early. She was carrying a newborn baby in her arms. Now they they will be able to go to the sea, as they had always dreamed.